Hello everyone. Welcome to the world of AWS. My name is Prashant and I am a AWS certified solution architect. I am using AWS from last 6 year and loving it every day. This presentation is a result of the medium blog which you are seeing on the screen and this is a three part series. In the first part of the series, I am just going to talk about the VPC fundamentals. In the second part of the series, uh, let's build I'm going to build a VPC using a AWS console. And in the last and the final part of the series, we are going to build a new VPC, but this time using Terraform. So let's get started. So as we all know, the VPC is one of the most essential component of the AWS infrastructure. So before we go into the deep dive into the VPC, let's try to understand VPC in a nutshell. So before the cloud era, we used to deploy all of our infrastructure either on premise or in data center. With the evolution of cloud, we start deploying our resources in the cloud so that we can think of VPC as our, as our data center. But rather than spending a month or year to deploy our infrastructure or resources in the cloud, uh, resources in a data center, it's just a matter of minutes in a cloud or just, it's just a matter of few API calls. Just want to highlight one thing before we move forward that in the VPC, let's pay special emphasis on the word P, which means private. As it is private, it's entirely under your control. As AWS want to make it as secure as possible, so they make it private. They let you choose your network or CIDR range. And once you choose that network or CIDR range, it's completely up to you uh, when you're going to put your instances in that CIDR range, who in which subnet or which instance is going to talk to, or it's completely under your control. So now let's talk about a VPC which comes with every account. Whenever you're going, whenever you're going to create your AWS account, there's a, VP, a VPC which is created by AWS for you by default, and that is called a default VPC. This VPC has a default subnet in each availability zone. We do not have much control over that VPC. So for example, this VPC includes an internet gateway and a public subnet. And let's say my requirement is that I want to deploy a database server, but I don't wish the database server to talk to the internet. And in those kind of a cases, we need to create a custom VPC or a non-default VPC. Finally, before wrapping up, I just want to highlight some of the VPC limits. So for example, in a region, you can only create a five VPC and that is just a soft limit. You can always contact our AWS support and they will increase the VPC limit for you. Uh, just want to say one more thing that this VPC limit is directly correlated to the internet gateway. And if you do not understand all these terms, I'm just going to talk more about this in the second part of the series. So the moment the AWS support is going to increase your VPC limit, the, AW, uh, the internet gateway limit is increased by default for you. Same way you can only create 200 subnet per VPC. And as, as I mentioned earlier, you can always contact AWS support and they will increase that limit for you. Uh, the IPv4 or CIDR block, which you choose to create your VPC, that is by default, the limit is five, but you can always increase that limit. And last one is that IPv6 CIDR block per VPC is only one. And this is a hard limit and you cannot increase it. So thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. See you in the second part. Thank you.